All right, there's a lot of stuff to cover in a short amount of time, so I'm going to go fast, so please pay attention. Uh, what you're looking at right there is an oscilloscope trace, uh, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's uh, grounded, actually. You can see here that uh, this lever for that channel is in the zero position, which means that the input is grounded. That means that there's no signal coming into the oscilloscope, and that allows you to set the zero position of your oscilloscope to something that you understand. So I'm going to set it right at that little line right there where it says A. So that's zero. Okay, that's what you get when there's no input to the oscilloscope. Okay, because it's it's the the probe is grounded. All right, that's the Ainsley channel A, uh, which is hooked to the uh, load here. Now for this demonstration I'm not using the Ainsley inductive load, I'll just use the light bulb because I'm not really concerned with the behavior of the load. What I'm trying to show here is the behavior of the oscilloscope. Okay? Uh, and uh, something that seems to be uh, unclear about the use of uh, AC versus DC coupling to resolve the ripple on top of a large DC offset. Uh, which is what we're dealing with on that load signal, okay? So, right now, I'm going to switch the oscilloscope to DC, boing. And you see how that trace went up? Because we have the Ainsley load there is essentially connected directly to the battery with only the load impedance in the way. So you expect a very little difference between that trace and what the battery is showing. And sure enough, that's what we got. Let me get the oscilloscope dials in there so you can see what's going on. I'm using a 10x attenuating probe. That means that the number you read on the voltage scale needs to be multiplied by 10. So we're on the 1 volt per division scale. 1 volt per big division scale. You multiply that by 10. So up from where we are here, we have 10, 20, and just under... 25 volts. We have about 24 volts. And sure enough, if we look at the voltmeter on the battery, 25.2, and we consider the voltage drop because of the resistance in the load, that's what you got right there. Okay? And the Ainsley circuit is running on the function generator at 2.4 kilohertz right now, and sure enough, you don't see anything, any weirdness on that, right? There's no AC signal on there. But there is. There is an AC signal on there. Uh, it's just too small to show up on DC coupling. What you have to do, you can display that signal by going to more and more sensitive uh, voltage amplification. You see it's starting to come in right there, but it's disappearing off the top of the screen. And you only have a limited ability on most oscilloscopes to correct that DC offset effect in DC coupling to bring it down. And there we're at the limit of my scope. I can no longer bring that trace down when we're set on DC coupling to be able to increase the amplification to resolve that signal. So what I have to do is go back to where I was, ground that, reset it to zero, to my known zero, right? Right there. And then I switched the oscilloscope to AC coupling. And you see how that jumped up and then came down, boom, right back down to where our zero was. So what that's doing is that is eliminating the DC offset caused by the battery. Now I can crank up the amplification, and now I start to see things in there. See that? See those spikes coming out? And you see how the trace didn't move up when I cranked up the amplification? That's the proper use of the AC coupling on an oscilloscope. It's for measuring or displaying. Here we'll crank up the time base a little bit. See those nice spikes in there? You'd never be able to see that if you stuck to DC coupling. Okay, that's it for that one.